We've talked a lot about the theory of, of landing zones and their benefits. So you might be asking at this point, what does a landing zone look like? Well, there's a, a rather large diagram that Microsoft has produced that initially can look quite complicated. Uh, I'm going to reproduce it here and we can talk through the diff different components and uh, hopefully it will make a, a bit more sense. So a key thing that we'll start with is your tenant. Uh, this is your intra ID tenant. So this was called Active Directory. Microsoft are renaming that to Microsoft Entra ID. Uh, there's perhaps some confusion with uh, Active Directory, which is the on-premise version to Azure Active Directory, so that kind of makes it simpler. So although it's possible to have multiple tenants, the, the recommendation is to stick with one. It can be a little bit confusing when uh, there are multiple tenants and people aren't quite sure which tenant they're, they're using. So just sticking with one tenant is the recommendation. So below that, you have something called management groups. So as the name suggests, these are groups that allow you to manage resources more effectively. Uh, by default, you always get a tenant root group. And then below that, uh, you'd create one for your corporation. So let's put Atvia here. The whole point of management groups are to organize your resources so that you can then apply things like uh, Azure policy onto those different groups. Now this means that things like uh, your sandboxes that we'll get onto in a minute can have a certain set of rules that they have to follow, uh, whereas your uh, infrastructure might be tied down and have uh, different rules. Uh, and you can apply them throughout this management group at the different levels, depending on whether you want it to apply to everything with you in your organization or just a certain part. So let's start on the next level with our platform, which I'll put right over here because there's quite a lot in it. So platform, then over here we'll have your landing zones. Now that might be a bit surprising uh, you might be saying, well, isn't this a landing zone? Why have we got landing zones within landing zones? This is getting quite complicated. Well, these are your application landing zones. So for each application that you have running in the cloud, you'd want to separate those out and have their own subscription within there. So that's why we have landing zones within this. Next, we'll put in uh, decommission. So this is uh, effectively the, the, the junkyard. This is where uh, things that you no longer require get moved into before they get uh, recycled or yeah, just taken down. And then finally, over here, we've got sandbox. So that's a bit of an American expression, but effectively that means that's, that's the area where you can use uh, to try th new things out. Maybe there's a new service that, that's come out. Maybe you're doing a proof of concept. And you would implement that over here in the sandbox area so that you could uh, try it out uh, and then get rid of it. Uh, if it's worked, then you'll implement that in your application. If it hasn't, well, you've, you've tried it out. So short-lived things kind of live in the sandbox. Things that are no longer required get moved to decommission before they get, uh, get rid of it. Landing zones is where your application, uh, different application subscriptions would live. And then platform is where your shared services are. So let's go down to the next level. We'd have identity, management, and then connectivity. So in your identity uh, management groups and subscriptions, uh, you would have things like uh, domain controllers, which will be virtual machines that were syncing with your on-premise. Uh, you might not have very much on there, depending on uh, what is in your existing estate, what's, what, what you've got on-premise. So if you've got uh, Active Directory on-premise and you wanted to sync to the cloud, you might put your domain controllers in there. So I'll just add in uh, 
a subscription. So you'd have a single subscription for their for identity. Next, we've got management. So that would be things like uh, automation accounts that were taking care of things uh, that uh, happened automatically. Uh, you'd also have your log analytics workspace in there that would be shared across your platform. And again, that would just be in a single subscription. Next, we get on to uh, connectivity. So in there, you'd have your hub. So this is getting onto networking. So you uh, often have a hub and spoke system. So this is where uh, you have a hub. And then uh, in that hub, you'd have things like your firewall uh, that would take care of uh, checking that the traffic that was routed between uh, different spokes was allowed. So all traffic that's going uh, from a spoke to, let's say, even the internet, a little cloud here. So if, if something in uh, this spoke, uh, so let's say it's a virtual machine, uh, wants to talk out to the internet, it has to go through the hub and then that hub has a firewall that decides whether it's allowed out to the internet. So this is really your, your control center. Uh, the same if, if this spoke wants to talk to something over here, it goes through the hub and then back out there. So that's a, a really useful way of controlling uh, the networking within your infrastructure. So that lives in a subscription down here. Things that might also be in there would be Azure DNS. Uh, if you're using things like uh, private endpoints, you'd put your uh, DNS in there as well. So anything to do with networking would live within the connectivity subscription. So we talked a little about these uh, application uh, landing zones down here. So there would be lots of them. So one for each of your subscriptions. But you'd also uh, probably want to split those out and have uh, a management group for uh, your public facing stuff. So, so this might be uh, websites or services that you're providing on the public internet. And then also uh, you might want to have a corporate section. So this would be your internal facing platforms that aren't accessible by the internet but are accessible to your on-premise uh, to your wider network, but not exposed. So that would also have one or more uh, subscriptions underneath there. Uh, we talked about decommissioning before. So that would be your, your kind of junkyard, your, your uh, area where things would go uh, before they were decommissioned and taken out, out of action. Uh, it might be that you needed to keep them for a certain length of time. Uh, but they were destined to, to be got rid of, so they would live under the commission. And again, sa sandboxes, you'd have uh, a number of sandboxes which, which would be short-lived, uh, proof of concept, uh, sort of things that are being tried out, but then they should have a relatively short life cycle and then they'll be disposed of. So that's a good way of organizing your organization within Azure. You've got management groups, so you can apply policy uh, at any point on here. Uh, so you might have quite lax policies over your sandboxes, uh, whereas everything's over here on the platform side uh, is, is fairly sort of set up from the beginning. There's not many changes on there. Uh, landing zones, uh, you're splitting between your public and your corporate, and again, you can have different policies in those areas.